Manchester United are closing in on a deal for Jadon Sancho, although the clubs haven't quite agreed a fee just yet. But what position does this leave Dortmund in once the Englishman leaves the club? That's what we're going to be looking at today with five potential replacements for Jadon Sancho at Dortmund. First up, and although maybe not a direct replacement, still someone who can operate in a multitude of attacking areas, it's Donny van der Beek. Now, the Ajax star has been reportedly leaving the club for the last year, although it hasn't actually quite happened just yet. There's no doubt that he's an insanely talented player, and what he will bring to Dortmund is the fact that he can score, assist, pass, and as I mentioned before, play alongside quite a fluid Dortmund attack. If you add into the fact they've got Torgan Hazard, Julian Brandt, Marco Reus, Gio Reyna, and even Rafael Guerrero, not necessarily mean that Donny van der Beek will play on the right hand side but he can switch in and out all of them playing in all the positions behind Erling Haaland and in front of the holding midfield two of the likes of Chan Witzel or Delaney means that Dortmund could have a very very good attack next season. The second player on this list and someone also that may not necessarily replace Jadon Sancho on the right but could move over to the left hand side and free up another one of those players I've just mentioned to play in another attacking role that is Memphis Depay. Now for me he seems like the best option on this list. He's 26 years old, he's got brilliant experience and if you forget about the ill-fated spell at Manchester United, has had a brilliant career at PSV and Lyon. In fact, since joining Lyon, he's contributed over 80 goals and assists to the side, which is pretty good going for someone who didn't exactly cost a whole lot of money back in 2017. On top of this, Depay is heading into the last year of his contract, which means that if Dortmund are going to sign him, we're going to get him for not so much money, just like Leon paid to Manchester United. And at 26, he's going to be heading into his prime years. As long as he puts that cruciate ligament injury behind him that he suffered for most of this season, they will definitely have a fine player on their hands. So the third option, there may be a little bit of a lesser known quantity for those of you who don't really follow too much German football, but he's impressed in Germany since moving from his homeland of Argentina back in 2018. Now, granted, it's harsh to put the relegation of Stuttgart in 2018-19 all on Nico Gonzalez shoulders but since then playing in the second division in Germany he has been on absolute fire. The 22 year old has managed to get 14 goals and three assists in just 27 league games and it's given the confidence and shown his ability and what he can really really do. Now of course you'll probably be saying ah, he's shown it at the second level in Germany but when you've got someone with this much talent and you combine it with the fact that Dortmund have got a reputation for nurturing youngsters and really getting the best out of players, this seems like a pretty good match. As I mentioned before, when it comes to transfer fees, this will definitely be the cheapest out of all of them if they're going to buy someone permanently. So it would actually represent a pretty good bargain for Dortmund. The thing is with Nico Gonzalez that sometimes, just sometimes, his attitude can kind of let him down a bit. The thing is, when a game passes him by and he's not really involved, then he really isn't involved. He'll do absolutely nothing and Dortmund will end up carrying him. It's not the kind of thing they want to be doing when you've got the pressure of big matches at the top of the Bundesliga and in the Champions League. Maybe he'll be a bit of a super sub. The fourth option though, and yes, this is pretty fantasy football manager-like thinking, but what if, what if, Ansu Fati were to come in on loan. Now, there's no doubt in my mind that despite the fact that the Barcelona board seem to be a little bit crazy at times, they're not crazy enough to sell their latest wonder kid in 17-year-old Ansu Fati. But if they wanted him to go out on loan and gain some first-team experience, what better place than Dortmund? From Barca's view, they seem to be spending a hell of a lot of money on experienced players, players in their prime, and sometimes just some downright older players doesn't really help when you're trying to bring through the likes of Fatty, as I said, at just 17 years old. If they're going to stick with Dembele, if they're going to stick with Coutinho, that looks a little bit unlikely, Griezmann, obviously Messi, Luis Suarez, hell, even Martin Braithwaite, then there's not really much room for Fatty to develop and get regular game time in a very, very good atmosphere in a good team like Dortmund. The thing is, if you were to be loaned out to a lower club, yeah, the pressure wouldn't be on him as much and that might not help him grow accustomed to the pressure of playing at Barcelona. With Dortmund, they're not at Barcelona's level, but they're going to be fighting for the title, they're going to be in and around the Champions League knockout stages and he's already shown that he's got the quality and a fair few games under his belt at the Camp Nou to prove that he would be in the first team. It's not like they'd send him on loan to Dortmund and they'd be quite scared about putting him into the first team and, you know, giving him a couple of minutes here and there. He's shown that he can start matches and play in the big games as well. And lastly but not least, there's a youngster within the squad. I'm not talking about Jude Bellingham, the kid they signed from Birmingham this summer because he's slightly more of a central player. No, this one is Gio Reyna, the son of former footballer Claudio Reyna. 
Gio really looks to have a bright future ahead of him. This has been some year for him already. He already became the youngest American to ever play in the Bundesliga, breaking former Dortmund man Christian Pulisic's record. Then when he scored against Bremen in their DFA Pokal defeat, he became the youngest ever scorer in the German Cup. It's been pretty good and it could get a whole lot better. Now we've seen enough of him in the last few games in the season to show that he's got real ability and he can play in the first team. As much as I don't see him playing all of the games that Sancho would have played, it is pretty good for him that a massive gap has been left by Sancho and they will be getting much more game time this campaign. The one question is that I want you guys to answer, will, after Dorman bringing in what looks to be around 100 million euros for Jaden Sancho, sit back and accept they've got a 17-year-old Gio Reyna or they go out and spend a little bit and then put someone ahead of him, maybe someone in their prime that we've seen on the rest of this list. Do you agree with these five? Who would you replace Jaden Sancho with and where should Dorman be looking to next? All of your thoughts, let me know in the comment section down below. You can smash the like button whilst you're there and click here or here to check out all of the other videos we've got going on on OneFootball. But until next time, I will see you guys later.